The number one rule for anti-aging is prevention is better than cure. It's going to be a lot easier to prevent wrinkles and sagging of the skin and hyperpigmentation than it is going to be trying to get rid of those problems. Hi guys, it's Poonam here. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about sunscreen and why you should be wearing it every single day. So ultraviolet radiation is something that comes directly from the sun and it affects our skin in many different ways. It is responsible for cancer. It's also responsible for premature aging. There's two different types of ultraviolet radiation, UVA and UVB. So UVB is basically what causes tanning and burning of the skin and it's also responsible for some types of skin cancer. Now UVA is one that's often overlooked because it doesn't actually burn your skin. You might not really be aware of it on a day-to-day -day basis but what UVA does is it actually penetrates the deeper layers of the skin. It damages the elastin, it breaks down the collagen causing wrinkles and sagging skin as well and obviously it can also cause cancer. UVA is really really underestimated I think in the UK. I think when people see the clouds outside or it's raining they really do think that oh you know I don't really need to be wearing my SPF there's no sun but UVA rays are actually present all year round all the time and they can even penetrate through windows as well which can really really accelerate your aging process and obviously as mentioned before it can cause cancer as well so that's why it's really really important to be wearing sufficient protection. To protect yourself from UVA and UVB rays, there are various things that you can do. One of those things is wearing protective clothing such as hats or sunglasses or you can actually get UVA clothing as well. Another thing that you can do is be wearing your sunscreen every single day. There are two different types of sunscreen that you can use. There are mineral sunscreens which are also known as physical sunscreens and there are synthetic sunscreens which are also known as chemical sunscreens. The type of chemical sunscreens that you can get are oxybenzone and avobenzone. I'll list some of the other options here so you can have a look. Chemical sunscreens can be more sensitizing to the skin, but they don't have any kind of white cast, which is really beneficial for those of us with darker skin tones. Mineral sunscreens contain ingredients such as titanium dioxide and zinc oxide. These tend to have a white cast and they can be slightly thicker, um, so it does make it a bit harder for darker skin tones. However, they are better for your skin in the sense that they're less sensitizing to the skin. If you guys want some recommendations for mineral sunscreens, then please let me know down below in the comments and I'll try and do a video for you. I do have quite a lot of sunscreens, I've got a massive collection, um, so I'll be more than happy to share those with you and recommend which ones are the best for brown skin tones as well. In terms of mineral sunscreens and chemical sunscreens, they both work just as efficiently at protecting your skin against the sun. First thing to look out for when buying a sunscreen is the sun protection factor, which is the SPF. The higher the SPF, the longer you can spend in the sun without burning. So generally an SPF of 30 or above would be sufficient. An SPF of 30 actually protects you from 97% of the sun's rays, whereas an SPF 50 only provides you with 98% protection from the sun. So really it's only 1% difference. So if an SPF 50 is, is a lot more expensive than an SPF 30, then Obviously go for the SPF 30 because the only difference that you're getting is 1% which is not going to be a great deal. Personally I always go for SPF 50, it might only be 1% but for me that's an extra 1% um, protection and coverage from the sun. It will not protect you against UVA rays. So the sunscreen that you choose really needs to be a high enough factor and also be broad spectrum to protect you from UVA rays as well. Now that is something that is really 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 important. Just look out for something that says broad spectrum protection. Now you may have also seen on some certain sunscreens it says PA++++++ and that is also a measure of the amount of UVA protection that sunscreen offers. Now PA++++ that's something that was developed in Japan to allow customers to be able to see how much protection that sunscreen has against UVA. In the UK it's most likely going to say broad spectrum. So I've got a couple of sunscreens here which are both from the UK. One is the SkinCeuticals and the other is the Bare Minerals um, and this one says broad spectrum and this one says PA++++++. Sunscreen in makeup is not enough. Um, I can't stress this enough. Having makeup that has a low percentage of SPF coverage is not going to be enough protection for your skin throughout the entire day. Often makeup will only have the SPF factor, it doesn't have broad spectrum coverage and as I mentioned the SPF content is really low. The second issue with makeup is that you would really really have to 
plaster that makeup on in order to get sufficient protection. Well, the foundation that I've got here is one from Primark and it has an SPF 15. It doesn't mention anywhere that there's any UVA protection or broad spectrum protection in here. Which brings me to my next point, which is how much sunscreen to actually apply. Generally, one teaspoon of sunscreen should be enough to cover your entire face and your neck. You should be really, really thorough with applying your sunscreen and making sure you cover all the areas really, really well. You really do want to cover your entire face and your neck area. If your hair is going to be up, you really want to make sure you get the back of the neck and the top of the ears as well. I, as a rule, always get the backs of my hands and chest area as well if that's on show. I really think these are the areas which really do show the signs of aging first, so it's really important not to forget the neck area as well. I definitely focus more under the eye area and around the mouth as well and the neck. For me those are the areas where I'm getting wrinkles now. I'm 31, I'm going to be 32 so I really do want to stop that process um, or slow it down at least. So wearing your sunscreen accurately is going to be the best way to do that. You must also make sure that you reapply your sunscreen in the day. It can be Quite straightforward if you're not wearing any makeup. Um, if you are wearing makeup, it can be a little bit more difficult. In those instances, I would recommend trying something such as a UVA spray. Um, the one that I have is this one here, SPF 50 Mist. And again, you would have to be quite thorough with this application in order to get the required protection. There's also facial powder that you can get to protect your skin. And this one is an SPF 50, and this covers you for UVA and UVB, which is excellent. Based on the research that I've done, many dermatologists have recommended to you Use it more often than twice a day but I've also heard from others that it's quite impractical to expect people to constantly be slathering SPF on their face because they're not really going to do it and um, so I think two times is more than enough. So just a little recap of all the things that I've mentioned in this video. Firstly, go for an SPF 30 or higher. Make sure it's broad spectrum and protects you against UVA and UVB rays. Make sure you wear your sunscreen every single day reapply it and make sure you wear it thoroughly. It is the most important thing to actually find a sunscreen that works well for you. Something that you actually enjoy using as part of your routine. That's really going to ensure that you actually wear it every single day and wear it properly as well. There's no point in trying to use something that you absolutely hate using because the fact of the matter is you're not going to use it. So go for something that you really really enjoy. And another little tip for you is obviously please go for something that is fragrance free. That is really going to reduce the amount of irritation that you're going to get from the sunscreen as well. So the information that I've given you today is taken from studies and I will link those down below for you. If you do have any questions then please leave them down below but I really do hope that you've enjoyed this video today. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel as well and I will see you next time. Bye!